word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire bless the lord O oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O oh my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquity who heals all your diseases? Verse 4. Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? And verse 5. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? Let's see verse 2 now. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The benefits of the Lord. The scripture we read was written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to give men an understanding of certain realities in the spirit and kingdom of God. All the spiritual realities that operate in the kingdom of God have been captured and hidden in the scripture. Which means that every time we read the scripture, we are having a possibility to have an insight into the realities of the kingdom of God. If I read the book on economics, what will it teach me? Economics. If I read the book on chemistry, what will it teach me? Chemistry. If I read the book on God, what will it teach me? God. So there are things that you will understand when you give yourself to the scripture. Amen. All the truths that are responsible for the maturity of Christians have been captured and hidden in scripture. What you need to know to become mature in this kingdom is in no other book but the Bible. There are people who have been in church for 15 years and they are not mature. They are not mature because they do not give themselves to the things of the scripture. They are in church, yet they don't read Bible. They are in church, yet they don't listen to messages. And they wonder why for the past 20 years, their life is void of God's glory. And these are the people that become offended and bitter when people who just come into church begin to manifest God. And they start thinking that God is unfair. There are dimensions of the spirit that are only unlocked by consistent fellowship in the secret place. There are dimensions of the spirit that are only unlocked by consistent fellowship with God in the secret place. Which means there are things that God gives to commoners and there are things that God only gives to those who are familiar with the secret place. Do you know if you have a phone and you have downloaded an app for example, in the app there is a part which is for free but there are other advantages of that app that are unlocked if you pay money is it true let's talk about an app like youtube for example or all these apps youtube whatsapp you can download it for free those who have these apps for free don't use it as much as those who have paid for it you understand? So, there are things that you can get for free. It's the same thing in God's kingdom. There are things where you come, as you receive the Holy Ghost, they are for free. But there are other things in the Holy Spirit, you must be consistent in fellowship, and it will be open to you. My prayer is that you should enter those dimensions. There are three things. In scripture number one, the promises of God are captured. They what? 2 Corinthians one twenty. When you read scripture, most often, the first thing that we all notice is what? God's promises. The things that God says he will do. And there are people 
whose focus is only on the promises. Now, it is right because it is these promises that bring faith. When a man begins to understand God's promises, what happens? Faith. There are people who do not have faith in God because they don't know God's promises. So what is the first thing we find in scripture? Some say promises. I never forget this. God's promises is the supplier of hope and faith. I get what I'm saying? When you are found in a situation where situations, reports are against you, remember what God has promised. So, when I study scripture, the first thing, now it is the easiest. Everyone here has seen promises in scripture. For example, we have a promise of long life. Scripture declares that our life should be 80 years, 90 or 120 years. So God has promised long life in scripture. Can I prophesy? God will satisfy you with long life according to his promise. He said, he shall fulfill the number of their days and their days are above 80 according to scripture. It is a promise. God has promised prosperity. Number two, the scripture captures the principles of God. The what? Show me Leviticus 9 verse 6. Then Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded you to do and the glory of the Lord will appear. Notice therefore, the glory of the Lord is the manifestation of the promise. So, someone say principle. The principles are the things we ought to do for the promises to become a reality. To every promise of God, there is a principle ordained to provoke its fulfillment. God's promises do not happen without man obeying a principle. God supplies promises, man obeys principle. So everything you expect in God, wisdom demands that you seek to know the principle that govern the manifestation of that promise. If there is a promise of long life, how do you get long life? Honor thy father and mother that you may live. So, any man that desires to enjoy the promise of long life must obey the principle of parental honor. Once you dishonor your parents, you dishonor your leaders, you are cutting short your days by your life. Do you get what I'm saying now? So, you desire, that is why, when you have a pastor, you need to take advantage of him. Man of God, I've been praying for a child. Can you tell me the principle that brings this reality? There are people whose frustration is that the promises they have read and believed, they have not experienced. And it is frustrating that the Bible says, none shall be barren or shall miscarry. And you find yourself fighting with barrenness. So there are things there, but you must understand that there are principles. And these principles is what activate the fulfillment of the promises. So you must know what? The principles. So number one, scripture capture what? Promises. Number two, principle. I have to know them. He said, this is the thing that the Lord has commanded you to do and his glory will appear. Notice, once you do it, the glory must appear. Every dimension of the spirit is captured by prayer but sustained by obedience to instruction. Which means you can capture something by an impartation. You need an instruction. They said to Samson, you, you will have power. But what is the secret of your power? Your hair should never be cut off. When you don't know the secret of your glory, you cannot sustain it. May God open your heart to the knowledge of these principles. Bible says, and Jesus knew what to do. A principle. John 6, 6, he knew what to do. They needed bread. Philip said, ah, you know, there are people who know that God can heal. But they don't know how God can heal. That's why they are not healed. Do you get what I'm teaching now? So, knowing that God can do it is not profitable until you know how God will do it. Amen. And number three, the scriptures captures the benefits of the Lord. Shout glory. glory. Psalms 103 verse 2. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not how many benefits? Forget not all you will see the benefits of the Lord. 
He said, forget not all his benefits. The benefits are the good things that God does for you. Principle. When principle and promise marry, what is a child? Benefit. So God, the father supplied the promise. You, by your obedience, the womb, the promise. So the principle is the womb where the promise grow and becomes a benefit. You will see God's benefit. Now hear what he said. He said, bless the Lord, oh man. Listen, and forget not, which means this man found himself in a place where he was, he was speaking to his soul. Forget not the benefits of the Lord, child of God. He commanded his soul. He said, praise the Lord. There are times you can go through trial and tribulation and begin to forget God's benefits. And you begin to ask yourself, what is the profit of all this prayer? What is the profit of all this fasting? What is the profit of all this giving? Look at unbelievers. They, they are not praying yet they are fine. What? You be careful. So where we find in this scripture, David was reminding his soul, remember that God is good. In all you do, child of God, remember that God is good. In all you go through, remember that God is good. In all your persecution, in all your trial, in all your tribulations, remember that God is good. No matter the pain you find, no matter what happens to your life, have a remembrance that the Lord your God is good. Let me show you something. Psalms 42. Let's take from verse 1. As the deer pants for the water, brooks, uh -huh, continue. So my soul thirsts for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Continue. My tears have been my food. Now, how many of you are in this kind of life? That's happened to many of us. My tears have been my food day and night. Read. Why they continually say to me, where is your God? Ah! Now look here. There are people whose life is in these Psalms. When people look at you and ask you, where is that God you have been preaching about? Where is that God you have been talking about? Where is that God we heard you say? I heard that you worship in AGM. I heard you say that my father, Prophet Kevin. How can that Prophet Kevin, do you not see this one? There are many of us who have become a mockery in our family. A mockery in our community. A mockery in, in our nation. Why? Because we have entered the place where they ask you, where is your God? In this scripture, it also speaks of Jesus on the cross. Eloi, Eloi! Lama sabashtani. The people ask, now, nah, it is different. It is not you asking, where is your God? It is people. Which means, I know where my God is. But people look at me and they are not seeing my God. And they ask themselves, no be, hi, friend. Wicked men take advantage of the misfortunes of believers to make a mockery of their God. Yes. Anytime something bad happens to you, I want you to understand that there are more people happy for that bad thing than those who are comforting you. Because there are people who think that your Christianity is challenging them. So they are happy when things happen which do not agree with your God you serve. He said, they ask me, where is that God? Now you know what I make we rest for this as we money devotion. Now, now you fail exam. You know, get it for talk. Now you know what I make we rest for this compound with prayer. Now, now you, your master, don't leave them. You know, get it for talk. Now you know what I make we rest any day. Family busy, maybe we pray, maybe we gather. But now see you, you are picking on that. You know, get team for talk. Where is your God? Can a man take advantage of the misfortunes of believers to make a mockery of their God? men they take advantage of the misfortunes of believers to make a mockery of their God they look at you and say ah Ashaya well don't bury where can people and they were them and they were they walked away can people and they were they take advantage see them listen listen Matthew see one of the reasons why you have to succeed is because of the amount of people waiting for your failure even if you don't listen, even if you like to die, I'm begging you that you should not die. Because the people who are waiting for your death to validate, listen, do you know there are people who have said some certain things about you in the private? And they are waiting for something to happen publicly to confirm what they said in the private. 
you know, there, there are people that God has to reply by himself. Sometimes God blesses you, not because of you, but because of his namesake. Because they are, there is too much mockery. They laugh at you when you come. You say, we don't come. Ashaya, may God reply them. 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 He asked him, what is your God? What is your God? What is your God? He doesn't have what to say. He doesn't have what to say. He doesn't have what to say. When the deliverer needs deliverance. When the healer needs healing. When the redeemer needs redemption. Go on with the Psalms, please. When I remember these things, what happened? I pour out my soul within me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept a piggy feast. He, listen, here he says, I, he says, I am a church member. That's what he said. He said, I go to church. I prayed. Now look here. He said, I go to church. I prayed. I fasted. He, he said, why is this thing happening to me? Verse 5. Hear what he says. He now speaks to his soul. Why are you cast down? Oh my soul. And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Now, notice in verse 5, he says, my soul is downcast. This is now where you tell your soul, praise the Lord and forget not his benefits. There is a time where your soul is downcast. There is a time where your soul is full of the pain, the bitterness of life, the shame you have endured. Sometimes, you find people, people who normally are not even qualified to be your driver. Now that you are taking bike, they cost you for road. You want to say, hey, see, you remember where, who you were. You look at all the excellence of God in your life and you see how people, you, you wonder, look, you see the way people treat you, you are amazed. And he said to his soul, my soul, why are you quiet? Which means, there is a phase in your life. If your soul is quiet, it means you are downcast. Because your soul must continually be declaring the praise of God. There are people, as they have gotten to that place, where their soul is not quiet. They have waited for that child. She has waited for that prophecy of the child. And the time, one month, she didn't see a menstrual flow. And she rejoiced. And gave praise to God. And said, God has done it for me. She believed that this is the pregnancy. Began to buy things for a baby. Then only to find the next week blood began to flow again. My soul, why are you quiet? No matter how we preach this gospel, there are people who are in true pain. That's why you cannot, you cannot dare come on the altar of God and begin to amuse and entertain people. People came with true problem, not to hear jokes. They are they have true true demon fighting them, true true sickness, true true poverty. We are not here to play. People's life depends on what we are preaching. He said, My soul, why are you quiet? And the soul replied, I am downcast, I am tired. Let's go to scripture, please. Oh my god, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Ammon. Notice now, he says, when I am down, what will I do? I will remember you. Continue. Deep calls unto deep. At the noise of your waterfall, all your waves and billows have gone over me. Continue. The Lord will command his loving kindness in daytime and in the night his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. Verse 9. I will say to God my salvation. Yeah, yeah. Hear what he says. Why have you... Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? Now stop, look here. You see, some of us, this is where we are in our faith. It looks as if God has forgotten you. It looks as if God is blessing everyone. When it comes to your heart, God does jump and pass. 
There are people whose life it appears as though God has forgotten you. And they're asking themselves, God, what did I do you? <laughs> this prayer that David was praying was not by revelation, it was by pain. Because the scripture says, Can a woman forget her baby? He said, Though she may forget, I shall never forget you. Which means, when it appears as though God has forgotten you, it only means God is walking in the secret. Hmm. Somebody here, you, you are going to jump into remembrance. When we say, and God remembered, it's not because God forgot. It means, the time when God visits you. God's remembrance means God's visitation. Let's go back to scripture now. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? Verse 10. As with a breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me. While they say to me all day long. Where? How many times? They just call you. Hello? Will you hear it happen? They, listen to me. They did not call you to comfort you. They call you to make a mockery. See, we hear we, we it happen. I shall. Ah, I'm praying for somebody. Oh. Your God will show himself. Amen. Let's go to scripture. Let's see the scripture again. As with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say to me all day long, Where is who? Your God. Why are you cast down? Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. So notice his contention is with his soul. And why are you disquieted within me? Now, hear the answer. Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. Now, look at something. When you now take these Psalms, eh, you add it with the one of Psalm 103. He now said, you join them, it gives you the understanding now. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. In Psalms 42, David began to explain that there is a possibility that a believer can enter a time where he, his soul is downcast. Can I tell you something? Do you know what makes your soul downcast? Tribulation. Trials and tribulations are strategies employed by Satan to make the souls of men downcast. Downcast means discourage. Trials and tribulations are strategies employed by Satan to make the souls of men downcast. They are tired of prayer. Tired of waiting. I'm telling somebody here, God will visit you. Yeah. Do you know what God said and said to God in Job 1 verse 11? He said, remove all his blessings and he will deny you. In Job 2, 4 to 5, he told God, make him sick and he will deny you. So we understand from scripture that when any time, listen, any time you go through a trial, what is happening? Satan wants you to deny God. Show me Job 1 verse 11. But now, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has. Yes, Satan. Touch all that he has and he will deny you to your face. In chapter 2 verse 4, Listen to what Satan said. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will surely deny you to your face. So we understand that anytime I see a trial, do you know that sickness can make you that if you are truly born again? God will visit you today, oh. Shout amen somebody. Amen. Number two. God permits trials and tribulations as an opportunity for men to demonstrate their faith and faithfulness. Anything that has happened to you, God knows. Tell somebody God knows. So there is a question. If God knows, what do you allow it? Jesus said to Peter, he said, Peter, Peter, the devil has asked to sift you. So Jesus saw Satan coming after Peter. But he still allowed Satan to come. But he prayed for Peter and said, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. So Luke chapter 22, 30 to 32, and Revelation 2 verse 10. He says, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. 
Say, I will not fear. Lead. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. That you may be tested. Yeah. And you will have what? Tribulation. How many days? Ten days. Be faithful unto death. It means even if you have to die, be faithful. But you will not die. Yeah. Are you seeing how God permits these things? So God permits them. He happens. Ah, what did this happen? God permit trial and tribulation because they are opportunities for men to do what? Demonstrate their faith and faithfulness. That's number two, right? Number three. The consciousness of the benefits of the Lord is what makes men consistent in doing the will of God in the midst of trial. Galatians 6 and verse 9. And let us not grow with it means what? Tired of doing good. For in due season we shall reap. So when you are doing good, what keeps you doing good, even when you are doing good and people do you evil, is that in a due season you shall what? Harvest. Do you know what makes a farmer consistent and hardworking in his farm? His consciousness that his labor is not in vain. There was a part of our mentorship that our mentor was our grandmother and our grandfather. Allah Baka. So I remember we go to the farm. Now there is a farm we go there because the farm is very far. They have built a house there. You go to that house, we'll be there. So we'll go there and we're walking farm. Sometimes when we go and start walking, under rain, we are walking. We will walk. You have to clear the farm. You finish clearing, we gather it, we burn. We're there for about one week. We clear, gather, burn, prepare the ground. Oh man, take hole. We walk, walk, finish the hole. All man get corn and beans, plant them. Holidays finished, I went back, I came, I went back to Yaoundé for school. Around November, September, she sent a bag of yam, cassava, beans and corn. And told my father, they should give me that that is part of what I worked for. I learned something. What makes a farmer consistent in hard labor is his joy of the harvest. So a farmer can walk under the rain. What keeps me praying for 10 hours is my joy of the answer. What keeps me fasting for 21 days, no food, is my joy for the manifestation. What keeps me consistent is because I know. So when I am planting seed, I am not looking at my seed. I am already seeing my harvest. That's why we pray. We don't give up. We are conscious. But a farmer who is not conscious of the harvest will eat his seed. Some say there are benefits. So you have, ah, he says, God is a rewarder of they that seek him. Understand some of the other benefits. Do you know what strengthens a woman in labor room? It's the joy that the child is coming. Because since she's the one that carries the child, she cannot wait to see the face of what she has carried for nine months. Madam, push, she will push. Push, she will push. She is feeling pain. But most women here can testify. As the child come out, when he cries, yeah, you forget all the pain you had. So there is a miracle that God will give you. There is a blessing that God will send to your life. There is a favor that God will send your way. There is something that God does. It makes you forget all your pain. It makes you forget all your sorrow. It makes you forget all your shame. Someone say, Papa, do it for me. Sit down. When the baby cries, that's why when a woman puts to bed and she does not hear the cry of the baby, she feels more pain than labor pain. Ah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Oh. A woman said to me, say, man of God, that it is more painful to give birth to a child that died than labor pain. She said she prefer one million labor pain and give birth to a child that is fine. So when they crack ah, you will not deliver a death miracle. Ah, yeah, yeah. In 1 Kings chapter 3, he says, and two women brought, took their children to Solomon. They were in one house and they gave birth at the same time. One slept on her child and the child died. And they changed the children. When they woke up in the morning, when the woman checked and her child was not crying, she said, the dead child is not mine. The dead miracle is not your own. The dead marriage is not your own. The dead 
get favor is not your home. I am saying that your miracle will shout forth. Your breakthrough will break forth. Favor will announce to you. Somebody say, my God, my God is a God of benefits. Is a God of benefits. Imagine the woman that has been barren. Imagine you coming for your dedication. Come and see Allah Listen, nothing sweet like that way evidence they are hand. When evidence they are mob, they need to believe. When it they are hand, argument is not stronger than evidence. When there is something in your hand, friend, when how do you want to say that Jesus is not alive when the tomb is empty? If he's not alive, where is the body? Oh my God is alive. God is going to give you a baby. God is going to give you a job. God is going to give you a house. God will give you a land. God will give you a good marriage. God will give you children. God will honor you. Why? They are his benefits. Shout the man somebody. Ah, Shadaba. David said, my soul wait. He said, wait. Wait on him. Let my hope be in God. I know that one day God will cause his face to shine. I know that one day God will arise as the mighty man. And all one shall know. Listen to me. There are times you are serving this God. It seems as if it is a mistake. As if you are not serving well. You ask yourself, Lord, what am I not doing right? Forget, everything is correct. But what no man has done, he has done for me. What no man can do, he has done. Oh, he will do it all. There are times that sickness binds you. And you start thinking, will I die of sickness? I came to say, Ngang. Allah Magashaya. There are times that barrenness has held you. And you ask yourself, I could just adopt some picking them. Now, go end. Ngang. There are times you look at your life and you realize with all your efforts, business down, everything down. You say, anyhow. Now, so my life go end. What is my answer? Ngang. There are times you look at yourself. You stand before the mirror and you look at your beauty. You look at your shape. He said, Sometimes I'm not going to marry it. Ngang. Ah, who is he that say a thing and it come to pass when the Lord has not decreed? God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repair. Has he spoken and not made it good? You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. It's the same yesterday. It's the same today. It's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Grace is on your side. Lift your hands shut. Yeah. Sit down. What are the benefits of the Lord? Number one, they are the rewards of the Lord. Hebrews 11 verse 6. But with that faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Revelation 22 verse 12. He said, I am coming and my reward is in my hand. Allah kaino shadia. Read. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Number one, the benefits of God are the rewards of God. These are the things he gives to those who continually seek him, obey him, and serve him. Some say, my reward is here. He said, God is a rewarder. In Isaiah 45 verse 19, he said, I did not ask you to seek me in vain. There is a reward for seeking God. There is a reward for serving God. There is a reward for prayer. There is a reward for giving. And my prayer today, you will enter your reward this month. He said, God cannot be mocked. Now here. Yeah. If God, he said, God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, that shall he reap. It also means God cannot mock you by giving you what you have not sold. I will, listen to me. I 
cannot sow honor to my parents and harvest untimely death. It cannot happen. I cannot sow service to God and harvest sickness. It cannot happen. I understand there are rewards for seeking God, for obeying Him and serving Him. In Isaiah 45, 19, He said, I did not ask you to serve me in vain. There is a reward for service. Number two, the benefits of God is our daily bread. Someone say daily bread. Shout it louder. Show me Psalm 68 verse 19. Somebody had a daily bread. Blessed be the Lord. Who, who went? Who daily lost us with sickness? Lost us with poverty? He loaded us with what? Benefits. When? Monthly. Weekly. Daily. Give us this day our daily bread. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can add Matthew 6, 11 there. He said, give us this day our what? You will begin to enjoy it from today. <laughs> now, do you know, ah, yeah, that if you miss today's bread, you know what God does? He multiplies the bread tomorrow. Exodus 16, 29. See, for the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Yeah, therefore, he gives you on the seed day Bread for how many days? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Let every man listen. Let everyone remain in his place. Let no man go out of his place on seven days. You know why? Because look at this. On the seventh day, it was a day of worship. So nobody had to work. God says, because you are not working on the seventh day, what you would have sold in your business on Sunday, I will gather all and give you on Saturday. Or I will gather all and add it on Monday. So any time you forsake the things of the world to give yourself to the things of the Lord, you attract double benefits. Friend, God knows how to restore. Ah, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mantle with wings and fly high. Now listen to me. In fact, if you know that you have to come to service on Wednesday at 4, by 6, tell God, Lord, just give me the double benefit now. Between 6 and 12, let me sell Double, 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 double. Now, if you understand this covenant, if, if I say, let's do a three days fast, and you have to close your shop, tell God, Father, these three days, you give me areas. He will do it. Stand on this scripture. Every time you leave something for God, He will do what? He said, God give you bread for two days. I'm prophesying. God will give you double load of benefits. Amen. Number three, what are the benefits of God, of the Lord? They are the pleasures of God. Show me Psalm 16 verse 11. You show me the part of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are what? Someone say pleasure. Show me Psalm 36 verse 8. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house. And you give them drink. From where? Now which one the river of your pleasure? That one, if you drink that now na milk will flow for day. Ah, listen, God will pamper you. I said, God will pamper you. Be pamperized. Do you know how God will pamper you? He, he just look at you. See my daughter. He pamper you with a good husband. Pamper you with a good wife. He pampered her now with Samuel. The over the pamperer. <laughs> Amen. Someone say pleasure. Can I tell you something? If you are poor, people will insult you. If you are rich, they will criticize you. So whether you are poor or you are rich, they will still criticize you. Choose your criticism. <laughs> Choose. <all. laughs> what did I say? Choose, yes. It's better for me to be rich and criticize me to you. <laughs> see, you don't serve God for all the years. You don't get money. See how they're poor. You don't get money. See, see, see all their own that church that they for life wouldn't take their money. So when I never get money, they say I deserve God and not get money. When I get money, they say I deserve God and for money. Choose your criticism. Oh. Money does not make happy. Does poverty make happy? I be, answer me, let me. I don't maybe I don't know. Money does not make happy. I ask my brother, thank you. I say money does agree. Money does not make happy. Does poverty make happy? 
If our poverty makes sad, we are poor and sad. There's no poor happy man. <laughs> All these things, they are vanity. Oh boy. Jet is vanity. Jeep is vanity. Bike is vanity. Bicycle is vanity. Choose your vanity. <laughs> I prefer the vanity of jet to the vanity of bike. <laughs> In fact, walking on your foot is still vanity. That's Mercedes Lex. It's still vanity. Honor vanity. <laughs> so which one do you choose? <laughs> Let nobody deceive you. <laughs> grand cargo, grand on a grand cargo. What on your foot? Na grand cargo. Bicycle na grand cargo. Bike na grand cargo. Jeep na grand cargo. Jet na grand cargo. Choose your own ground. Cargo. <laughs> Amen. Someone say pleasure. Pleasure. How much time again? Pleasure. Listen, after you have finished praying and you fast, shave your hair now. You are living in beer like Elijah. Shave your hair. Dress well. Christianity is not, it's not it, faith is not madness. Oh. There's nothing like a madness. I'm walking by faith, not by self. But we don't have x-ray. We are seeing by the way you are looking. Oh. Amen. Never ever think that poverty makes you close to God. If, if poverty does anything, it makes you a candidate for witchcraft. I'm telling you. When you don't gain money, you must start facing all my game money and younger man. What did they do and they do? What did they do and they do? <laughs> you will always be vexed. I want to say, choose your own grand cargo. So, the man, the pastor that came and preached, all these pastors were having private jet for vanity. I said, my bro, you that came with your bike, that's also vanity. But my brother, I choose by the private jet vanity. <laughs> I'm back. You come up, you come up. Listen, from the water to your own day by plane is 20 minutes. By bike, <laughs> in that many days. <laughs> Which one do I choose? <laughs> Whether you wear a cap or you wear a weave on, oh, a vanity. <laughs> Some people feel like they, they, they wear gold watch. What on a plastic watch? On our goal was honor. In the scripture, Jesus did not preach against prosperity. He preached against materialism. Materialism is when you have become covetous and greedy and begin to live for the sake of things. Prosperity is when you use things for the will of God. Materialism is when you use yourself to have things. It's different. Wait, give me the 20, 30 verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose. Say, I choose life. I choose prosperity. Ah, oh boy, cursing is not good. Say, I choose blessing. Notice, we have the power to choose. Do we have it or not? Ah. So, what do you need to do to enjoy the benefits of the Lord? Number one. Number one you have to do to enjoy God's benefits is you must trust in the Lord. Show me Psalms 55 verse 22. Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Jeremiah 7 verse 17 and 18. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Who does what? And whose hope is in who? In the Lord. Verse 8. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spread out his roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes but its leaf will be evergreen he will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit why? he trusts in the Lord don't take your trust out of God in the midst of pain in the midst of trial I trust in the Lord That's why we say, strengthen my feet to walk in your way. When I am weak, your strength prevails. 
Lord, lead me to the place where I see your face in the warm of your embrace, in the realm of your grace. Now look at that. Trust in God. There are things you go through. He says, I shall say, once you begin to doubt, there is no trust again. I am sure. Say, God is good. And he can only be good. Say, God can never be evil. Say, God is good. So, where there is trust, there is no doubt. Say, there is no doubt. How many of you trust God? Can I tell you something? How do you know you don't trust God when you worry? He said, they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be. Yay. Number two, obedience. Someone say obedience. Show me Jeremiah 18 verse 10. If he does evil in my sight, so that he does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good which I wanted to benefit it. If you don't obey God, you cannot see his benefits. Friend, there are many of us here. While we are suffering today, we are rebellious. God said to you, every month, give a bag of rice to orphanage. You gave it for three months and you stopped. You have denied your benefits. When it comes to obedience, we obey God no matter how we feel. Because obedience is not conditional on temperament. It's conditional on instruction. What God has said is what I do. Remember every instruction that God gives you, obey it. Your enjoyment of benefits is predicated upon your obedience to instruction. There are things that God has said. Remember them. Sometimes instruction may look foolish, but they carry great results. Some words are painful, but the more painful they are, the more gainful they are. Obey God without reserve. Obedience is committing yourself in doing the things that please God, not that please your flesh, not that make you happy. When it comes to obeying God, don't doubt, don't wait, don't procrastinate. Obedience must be quick, prompt, and consistent to attract a benefit. Do it now. There is no better time to obey God than now. If God says fast, start the fasting tomorrow. Oh, number three. Honor. Ephesians 6, verse 1 to 2. Honor your father and your mother that it may be well. My children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Continue. Honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise. Verse 3. That it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. My dear children, honor can never be wrong. Look at me, oh has never been wrong and will never be wrong you hear what i said honor can never be wrong has never been wrong and will never be wrong never find yourself in a place where you dishonor your parents whether biological or spiritual if you do that benefits are cut off honor never dishonor whom god has honored among those whom God has honored in your life, the first is your parent. Your mother, your father who gave birth to you. Never, ever, 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 no matter their mistake, dishonor them. No matter what happened, always deal with your parent with fear of God. Most of you ladies that challenge your mother, I don't tell you now, they know the drag rapper or mommy. Even when they are wrong, be quiet. Honor. Oh, Honor is not just what you say. It's what you do for your parents. When God begins to bless you, make it an assignment to wipe away the tears of your parents. Make it an assignment. Let God's blessing show upon your parents. There are women that marry a man and want the man to forget a family he has known for 30 years. Are you know, is that no witchcraft? A man has known his mother for 30 years. Known his brothers and sisters, they paid fees, did everything. You marry him today, and you say, I now I see your family from my house. Be delivered from witchcraft. What, what kind of talk is that? Those people have labored for him. He knows you only for one year, and you want him to forget a mother he has known for 30 years. Who you be? A brother he grew up with. 
on the same bed. They play together. When there was trouble, when they were fighting, his brother fought for him. They broke bottles and they fought against people. You want him to leave that his brother for you. You are not a good wife. Any wife that enters a family and scatter it, you need to check yourself. Your prayer must be, let my husband be fine with his family. When money enters your husband, be the one to tell him to send, send money for your mommy. Even if you are the elder sister, if your brother marries, even if you are older than his wife, if you stay there, honor her. She is the mommy of that house. A wife is a mother over a house. Don't ever enter your brother's house and become arrogant and say, no, no, buy a property, no, buy a property. You know if you go walk in your own, when you marry a woman, take care of her family. Make sure her parents are fine. Oh no! If you want to marry a woman, check the way she deals with her parents. Any woman that speaks back at her parents is a knife. Don't marry her. If you are in courtship, if, you're, if that girl insults her parents that she wants to marry you, I tell you now, run. You know why? She has, listen, listen to me. She has come with a curse. Same thing like you, a young man. You insult your mother, your father. I'm going to marry that girl. We're not like her own. I got that. You talk for your mama and your papa. So, my sister, don't marry him again. Insist him corrects what has happened. There is a way to disagree without being disrespectful to your parent. You tell mommy, say, no call my phone. No call my phone again. No call my phone. Yeah, yeah, mommy, where you born you? You come up for sight. Oh no! Then you listen. Then you ah uh, shadakaya. When a wife, you know, when you read the Ten Commandments, God spoke about God, God, God. Then he mentioned two important things: honor for parents and wife. There are men, it's the way you treat your wife, that's why you cannot see benefits. He said, first Peter 3 7, honor your wife. There are women who don't honor their husband. When you see your pastor, you are shaking. Prophet, 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 that is a, that is a, that is a. When, when it is your husband. <laughs> uh -huh. You want to wait? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah! My sister, I'm, I'm not your husband, no. I'm not your husband, mother, me, oh. You have special plates in your house. That if pastor come, he's serving food. He's give your husband food in plastic plate. What did it happen? Now, now, now pastor, they pay the house rent. Now, what did it happen? <laughs> Oh no. There are women that honor their boss more than their husband. Go sit down for our place. Good morning, sir. Good morning for us. Emma? <laughs> oh. They got, they got a husband. D man. <laughs> D man. <laughs> I said, D man, you saw it. <laughs> ah, but in the job side, sir. Even when your boss insults you, what do you say? Sir. Many of you may you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But your husband, one insult, you twist your face like a masculine. Make him know that angry. But you cannot frown like that in your job side. Because you know that in your job side, your benefit is your salary. Not knowing that in your home, your benefit is long life and prosperity. Honor your husband. Honor your wife. Honor your parents. Honor pastors. It clear? Can I show you those benefits? Psalm 3 verse 2. Who forgives? Say, I receive forgiveness. Are you saying number one benefit? What? Some say forgiveness. Number one benefit is forgiveness. Number two, who heals all your diseases? Bless the Lord, all my soul. And forget not how many? Number one benefit, deliverance from death. That's number three. Number four, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy? Number five, I, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed? See the five benefits. He said, God loads your life with forgiveness, with healing, with deliverance, with mercy and goodness. Forgiveness, healing, deliverance, mercy and goodness. All these five things will begin to follow you from today. I declare they are loaded into your life. Now we have a question before we end the message. What do you do when God shows you benefits? Show me Psalm 116 verse 12. Let me show you something there. What shall I render to the Lord for all his? 
So it's a question. What, so there's something to be done. Not so. Now, let me give me Second Chronicle 32, verse 22 to 25. Does the Lord save Ezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all the others, and guarded them on every side? The Lord did what? Deliver them. And many brought gifts to the Lord at Jerusalem and presented to Zechariah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations thereafter. Continue. Read. In those days, Ezekiah was sick and near death. And he prayed to the Lord and he spoke to him and gave him a sign. Verse 25. But Ezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done to him. And his heart became proud. What happened? So God's anger came on the country. Look here. He says, God blessed Ezekiah. He was in war. God saved him. He was sick. God healed him. But Ezekiah did not respond to the benefit. After that, more trouble came. There are three things you must do to respond to God's benefit. If not, they will come and stop. Number one is praise. When you have an Psalm 103 verse 1 to 2, when you always complain about God, you will not see benefits. He said, my soul, praise the Lord. My soul, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. Have a mindset of recognizing and acknowledging what God has done. Lord, thank you. Lord, we are traveling and the brakes failed. You saved us. Thank you. That is praise. Praise is not where you come to church. If they walk, if they walk, if they walk. That's dancing. Praise is the acknowledgement of God's goodness by the words of your mouth. Lord, thank you. Lord, you are good to me. Learn it from today. All these complaints, see me hunting them. Look for what God has done and begin to say it. Lord, thank you. Thank you, you have helped me. Last week, I had this pain in my body. The pain is gone. Thank you, Lord. Now, praise is what you do between you and God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Someone say praise. Psalm 103, verse 1. 1 to 2. Number 2, you must testify. Show me Luke chapter 17. Let's take from verse 13 to 20. Tell somebody you must testify. Take from verse 12. And as he entered into a certain village, they met him. How many lepers? 10. Verse 13. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Continue. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. Tell somebody, turn back. Yeah. And with a loud voice, what did he do? Glorify God. He said, hey, I'm healed. He began testifying. Continue. And fell down on his face and at his feet, giving thanks. Giving what? He said, Jesus, thank you. I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. Continue. And he was a Samaritan. Hear what Jesus said. And Jesus answered, were there not ten please? but where are the nine? How many people were healed on prayer line? Why is it only four that came to testify? Jesus said, where are the nine? Continue the scripture. He said, was there not found anyone to come and give glory to God? They are not found that return to give glory to God, said this stranger. Jesus was surprised that after he had done. You see people, when they want healing, you will not sleep. Prophet, pray for me, prophet, my back, my back. As they get healed, we don't see them in church, so they get sick again. What a shame. People have problems. And you don't sleep, they torment you. After service, I am tired. They will see, say, Papa, I beg. Just two minutes, let me just see for two minutes. Let me just see for two minutes. I will say, come and pray. As they get the miracle. Your testimony is a debt you owe God for the work he has done. When God works, he said, we shall call on the Lord. He shall deliver us and we shall glorify him. When Jesus healed the madman, he said, go, give me Mark 5, 19. He said, go and tell people what God has done for you. Man of God, he said, I'm ashamed to testify. But you are not ashamed to stand on prayer line. However, Jesus did not permit him. He said to him, go home to your friend and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. How he has had compassion on you. Tell them. Tell them. Today we are in church. We saw testimonies. Tell them. Come back and testify. Nothing is too small in God's work. God did it for me. Come back and testify. Are you getting what the Lord is saying? And number three, an offering of thanksgiving. Psalms 107 verse 22. Let them sacrifice what? The sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his work rejoicing. Give me Psalm 50 verse 14. Offer to God 
thanksgiving and pay your vow to the most high. Give me Luke 5, verse 13. Then he put out his hand and touched him and said, I'm willing to be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him, verse 14. Uh -huh. What did Jesus say? And he charged him to tell no one. But go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering. The third way to respond to the Lord's benefit is to give an offering. A sacrifice to say, Lord, thank you for what you have done. Anytime God works anything in your life, remove an offering and give. I'm not talking about Sunday service offering. No. A off, they call this one free will offering. That's giving offering. You say, Lord, for this you did. When you give this kind of offering, you are specifying, Father, I'm giving this offering for this. He said, go to the priest and say, man of God, this is what your God has done for me. I came with this offering. When you do that, God's benefits come they stay and they multiply. Stand on your wonderful feet.